All right, we've got a bit of a quick one today. We're going to talk about quantifiers, but we're going to break them up into two different videos. One, quantifiers that act as pronouns in this video and quantifiers that act as determiners in another video. So this one is pronouns. So we want to figure out the difference between the sentences Trevor smiled, everybody smiled, and somebody smiled. Because we know there's a difference. In predicate logic, if we say Trevor smiled, what we would get is something like this. Smiled, and then it would be T smiled. But in the case of everybody smiled, we don't get that. We get a predicate logic translation for all x, uh, and then I'm just going to use a dot here. Why not? We're being we're used to that right now, and it would be smiled x. So it's saying for everything in the universe, x, x smiled. And for the case of somebody smiled, we would have existent x such that smiled x. So we know what our final translations really should be because we can turn these into truth conditions so we can say one if uh for all x in the set, set of domain of entities um x smiled so we could write it in terms of regular words too so how are we going to do this what are we going to give to words like everybody and somebody well here's what i suggest with everybody, really what we have is we have for all x, we don't know what the predicate is, but we do know that x is going to apply to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce an arbitrary predicate that we're going to fill in, and then we'll introduce our lambda p outside of that to fill it. And then we're going to be able to take the function for smiled and have our lambda p for all x, px, apply to that argument lambda x dot x smiled. And for somebody smiled, it's going to be very similar. For somebody, we want exists an x, then a uh, predicate there, and then another x. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll just abstract it with a function, and we'll be able to apply our verb phrase to it. So let's take a look at this in a tree, and let's take a look at types because we haven't talked about that yet. So smiled is type ET. It is a, an intransitive verb. It's looking for a subject and it's going to pop out a truth value. We know that our sentence is going to be a truth value, but everybody is not an E here. Why? Because we know that in terms of our translation, we're going to get lambda P dot for all X EX. So What's actually happening here is we're taking a function, et, and then we're sending it to a truth value. So this is a type ett. Our lambda p is what we're inserting as the et. So as we go up our tree, the dp is also going to be an ett. And now we're still getting a truth value at the sentence level. We're just doing it in a different way. Instead of using the verb phrase as the function and the determiner phrase as the argument and E going into an ET, we're doing it the other way around. So let's see how this applies. So smiled is going to be lambda x dot x smiled. And we're just going to copy and paste this up the tree for both of these. And we're going to see how this works. So let's put this up the tree too. And let's do some application here. So at the sentence level, we have lambda p dot for all x px. So that is the function we're going to do. And we're going to apply that function to our argument, lambda x dot x smiled. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our lambda x dot x smiled and put it directly into that p. And we're going to get rid of our lambda p because now we have our, our thing inserted in there. So this is going to be true if and only if for all x, now I'm going to do this right here, lambda x dot x smiled. This is what we're replacing p with. And then we're going to apply x to that afterwards. So that lambda x dot x smiled with x applied to it, it's just going to reduce to x smiled. So our final condition is going to be true if and only if for all x, x smiled. And we could write this in regular words to make it more like our other trees. So that's everybody. With somebody, it's going to look very similar. I do want to do one more, though, which is nobody, because I want to think about how we would be translating this one, because it is a little bit different. So if I say nobody smiled, let's just think about the final truth condition. This is true if and only if 
There does not exist an X such that X smiled. That would be nobody smiled. That's our final truth condition that we want. So when we think about nobody, we'll be thinking, okay, uh, this is going to be not exists an X, dot. we're going to put a predicate in and then apply X to it. So we're going to do our P for our function, lambda P as an abstraction, and that's going to be what nobody looks like. So uh, if we just take a look at our smiled, lambda X dot X smiled, if we do the application on these two, you're going to see that we end up with our final result up top. And it's going to look exactly the same way as before. You're going to be taking this lambda x dot x smiled, and you're going to be substituting it into this p position, getting rid of the lambda out front, and then distributing x inside so that way it's bound with the quantifier. But that'll get you your end result. That was quantifiers as pronominal like objects. So they're acting as pronouns here. We'll take a look at quantifiers as determiners next time.